Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Why do we go to church? Listen, there are a lot of Christians that are not in church or they're in the wrong church for the wrong reason and they are not spiritually growing. This is very important. If you are omitting the commandment of going to church, you're not going to have growth in your life. You're not, you will not have spiritual growth. Right? Jesus said here that all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. And it's Jesus that sends his disciples in power. If you want power on your life, you need to be in church. And I'm going to show you, right? Because what's he do next? He says, go ye. Jesus says, because I have all the power, go ye. You need to go out and do some things. Look at verse 20 in this chapter, Matthew 28, 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. He's saying, hey, now you need to teach, right? We go to church to learn. We go to church to teach. We have a men's preaching night where the men get up and they study something for themselves. They decide what they're going to preach on. They do it out of God's Word. And God's Holy Spirit works through them as they preach the Word of God. I love it. I learn from it. It's a great opportunity in this church. You know, and we also come to church to learn. Listen, as the preacher of this church, I learn from other people in the church. I learn when, when the little kids come back from evangelizing, from preaching the gospel, and they start telling me things. Man, that puts it in my mind. It puts it on my radar. It puts it like, hey, that's an emphasis. With this child just out of the mouth of babes, right? God reveals things to us. And even all the more from these men of God and from these ladies and the families that are in our church that are in God's will, we can all learn from one another. Listen, I'm not the only one you can learn from here. Brother Marcel can teach you. Brother Dale can teach you. Brother Zach can teach you. I can go. Brother Doug can teach you. I can go around the room. All of these men that are studying their Bible, God's power of the Holy Spirit is on their life. And you can learn from them if you're willing. If you'll go to church. You know, you think about it. This is Church is sort of like spiritual exercise. Right? Go, go to church and do some spiritual reps. Right? Why do you go to the gym? Why do you go to the gym? To get stronger, right? Right? To, 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 get, to, get, to help your, your physical character, you know, to get stronger muscles. You know, but in 1 Timothy 4, it says, Exercise thyself rather unto godliness. It is hard, exercise is hard work. Right? Lifting weights or running is not easy. It pushes your body. And the Bible teaches us here we should exercise ourself unto godliness. It's not easy. It's difficult. We have to force ourselves to do it. He goes on, he says, For bodily exercise profiteth little. Yes, if you do, if you eat healthy and keep your body in, in, in the right you know, area, then maybe you'll live an extra five years longer and that would profit you that you can do more for God. Yeah. Or maybe if you're not eating all the junk food, then you won't die you know, with, full of cancer where the last 10 years of your life you're laid up in a bed and maybe you can actually go out and do something for God. Right? So bodily exercise profiteth little, but he says, but godliness is profitable unto all things. You know there are people that eat junk food that are, that are their body's a mess, their life is, their, is a mess, their health is way out of order, but they're actually trying to be godly. They're learning the Word of God, and God can use that person more than a healthy, weak Christian. Yep. Right? Healthy in the flesh, weak in the spirit. Right? Hey, whether or not you exercise isn't what this is about. The point is, I want you to connect some dots. You know people go to the gym. You know they spend time at the gym. You know people do certain things to keep their health. What are you doing for your spiritual health? Are you exercising godliness? Now that you're saved, God wants you to obey His commandments. Yeah. Right? Now that you're saved and your soul is eternal, secure, the Bible says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works right. and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Are you doing spiritual exercise? Because that's really what church is for. If you're not going to church, you're missing out on so many things. Yeah. And listen, a, a very famous verse, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works. Right? Exercise is works. Getting saved is not works. Exercise is easy. It's free. Okay? But he goes on. He says, For, he says, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Now that you're saved, He wants to use you to do good works. 
You cannot put the good works before the cross. After you're saved, after the cross, yes, get some good works. Exercise some godliness in your life and, and you know, grow as a Christian. And it starts by going to church. This is the spiritual gym. It's right here. Right? This is how you change your priorities in life. Listen, if any of you in here go to the gym more hours in a week than you go to church, you got a problem. Uh -oh. That profits little. But the Bible says godliness profits all things. You understand God will give you the wisdom and the power in your life if you're willing to exercise godliness. If you're willing to exercise godliness, he will give you, he will give you power over all things. Not just your health. That's little things. Look, turn to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. We come to church to learn from each other. We come to church to inspire each other. And there's certain people when they walk in here, man, it's an encouragement. Brother Nicholas travels for Man, it's good to see. He, he hasn't always been able to make the trip. It's good to see him. Brother Matthew's back in church. Praise the Lord, man. That's an encouragement to me. That's exciting. God is doing something here. There are families that are here that God is using to bless other people. And when you look around and say, man, look what God's doing. You're inspiring me to do more for God. You're inspiring me to live for God. This is how God works in the church. And Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Yeah, God wants to call out a, 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 a local assembly, a local church, a body of believers to strengthen each other, to learn together of God to learn from Him, to encourage each other, and the gates of hell will not prevail. I don't care if there's a hundred atheists standing outside that door and they all want to, they want to put us to death. God has more spiritual power than they have physical power. God is greater than them. And we need to learn that we have to exercise our inner man. We have to exercise our spiritual man by learning of God. And it starts with church. And like I said, Moses, it talks about in Acts chapter 7, it says that there was a church in the wilderness. The church is not just a New Testament thing. It didn't just start in Matthew 16. It didn't start in Acts chapter 2. It didn't start in 300 AD with the Catholics. Listen, the church has always been around. Church means congregation. Congregation. A, a, an assembly of people. A group of believers. And we go to church not for the music. Let me tell you, if you're going to church for, for the music, oh man, the show, the lights, the smoke, yeah, the rock and roll, you're going to church for the wrong thing. Yeah, that's right. not what church is about. That's right. yeah. If you want to watch rock and roll, if you want go to the, go down and watch the bands on the beach. Yeah. Forget about it on a Sunday morning, right? Well, wouldn't you rather watch the real thing instead of a bunch of wannabes anyway? Think about it. Not that I'm 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 advocating for that, but you know, we don't go to church for superficial for fleshly reasons. You don't go to church just to see all your your good old buddies. Your old buddies that you used to go to the bar with, now you go to the church with. Wrong church. Wrong reason. Listen, church is for spiritual growth. It's not for meeting people to grow your business. Well, I'm just network marketing and I'm getting contacts so I can tell them what I do and maybe you know pitch them on insurance or something like that. Listen, that's not what church is for either. It's not for Amway. We don't sell in the church. Nothing is for sale in this church. And look, there are a lot of people that get this, this emotional high from the worship time, right? Yeah. Church is not an emotional high. It's not about just, just you know, singing these vague songs that are not specific about what God has done. Yeah. Church is to learn about the Word of God. Amen. The power that's in the Word. And if you want to find the will in your life, come to church. Right? If the church you go to or the you've seen other churches you've been to where it's like a 15 minute pep talk, hey, good job, don't change anything. You're on the right track. That's not church. Right? Church should correct you. Church should say, hey, whoa, you want to do it better? Do it this way. Yeah. Hey, you looking for a problem? This, the Bible is compared to a mirror. You look into it, you see the real you. You see the spiritual you. You see the state of your soul. But if you never open up the Bible, if you never hear the preaching, then you don't see these things. You're not aware of these things, and you're more likely to live in the flesh. Look, you're in Hebrews chapter 10. Look at verse number 24. It says, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Consider one another to provoke. Provoke makes me think of putting your finger in somebody's chest. Right? You've seen people provoke a fight. Hey, hey, buddy. Right? Well, the Bible says to consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. Hey, where you been? I missed you. How are you? Hey, I want to see you in church. Man, it's good to see I missed you. Come to church. We're supposed to provoke each other 
to be loving, look what he says in the next verse, verse 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Church is somewhere where we encourage each other, we exhort one another, we do it through love. We go out together doing good works, preaching the gospel. Turn to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. In Ephesians 1, it says, And he hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Jesus gave power to his disciples. Jesus gives power to the church. He says, which is his body in the next verse. You understand, Christ died for the church. He laid down his own body. He did it as an example, as a picture. Marriage is a picture of how much God loves the local church. And he's given all power to us, the power especially to learn of his word, to learn who he is. And he instituted the church, and it needs to be a priority. And people that don't have church as a priority, they're not going to have the spiritual growth that they could. In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 19, it says, Yet in the church I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also. The point of the church is to teach others. The point of the church is to increase your learning. Yeah. If you go to church and you get that warm, fuzzy feeling but you didn't learn anything, it's a waste of time. Yeah. You pat you on the back and then the next day everything's back to the way it was. You ought to increase your understanding of God. We need to learn more about who Jesus is. Amen. That's why we go to church. You say, well, I know who He is. Yeah, but there's so many things about God. that, we, that are, it, it, It's still a mystery. There are so many things from the beginning and the end that we see about the Son of God that can be learned if you go to church. 